What's up, everybody? This is JD, and I am here with Manda Manning, the media coordinator for Pensacon. And I really, uh, it's been an awesome event so far. And I want to take a couple minutes and actually give her a chance to speak because uh, without her and her, her awesomeness, you know, obviously Geek.io wouldn't be a part of this awesome event. And um, I just, I think it's important to actually hear that side of things too because, you know, sometimes it gets overlooked. And I, and I do believe that, you know, press relations and things like that is crucial to the success of, of an event like this, um, even though by, by your numbers, right? <laughs> You haven't really needed us, have you? <laughs> so, um, Amanda, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and kind of, um, and, and you know, obviously I mentioned that you're the media coordinator, but just yeah. talk to me kind of a little bit about how um, you helped get everything started for Pensacon. Sure. Um, so I came on full time with Pensacon probably um, October of last year, um, but they, I was working in the same office. Uh, as Pensacon and I mean Pensacon really didn't have a full-time staff until yeah. October. Oh wow. Um, so it was pretty much uh, and So this is 2003. So this is like months like four or five months ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah um, It was it started officially in uh, February of last year and um, It was uh, it was Ben Vilecki who is the CEO of kinematic entertainment and he bought Pensacon and Mike Inslee is the chairman of Pensacon. So Mike Inslee, this is his uh, pretty much his brainchild. Oh, awesome. And so him and Ben have been, you know, they're long So he's the guy I should just send the thank you letters to. Right, right? yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so uh, he, he and Ben are, have been good friends for a while, and he brought the idea to Ben, and Ben loved it. So he helped him. He's Ben is pretty much the funding behind all of it, and uh, Mike is this is his brainchild, like I said. So he was pretty much he was working on it. He was the only one working on it really. Wow. Up until uh, October, and he would have us um, do like you know graphics here and there, right. uh, you know, because he was really active on Facebook, and so we'd help him out with things here and there. But he was the one that was booking the guests and everything, and I mean. He's doing this all on so the side. So this is one individual literally reaching right. out to, I mean, there's got to be, I, I mean, I, I don't know how many guests are there here. Over 90. Over so he 90, reached yeah. out to 90 individuals and just right. goes, we got to get you. That is yeah. that is pretty badass. It's impressive, yeah. And he has a full-time job outside of that. Wow. And Pensacon itself is a full-time job. So he, I don't know how he does it. That is, that is mind-blowing. So. I have a hard enough time keeping up with the, the things that we do know, on our yeah. side, man. That's nuts. Yeah, so. it is crazy. So finally, it got to a point where we were like, look, we need a full-time staff here because it, it just was blowing up, you know? Right. Because it initially started, the idea started as something really small, doing it over at the Crown, um, one day, having it in the, the ballroom or something. <laughs> Shoebox, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we had Kane Hodder and uh, Peter Mayhew were the first two guests that they had lined really? up. Really? So yeah, they were, Mike said... That's kind of, I don't mean to interrupt no, you, but it's kind of like coming out of the gate and just knocking one out of the park, yeah. you know? I mean, that's oh, really yeah. cool to, to get, like, you know, Chewy and... Yeah, that's just, right, yeah, yeah, and he wanted to get those two in particular because from the very beginning, he was adamant about it being all-inclusive. Yeah. He really wanted it to be, you know, something there for everyone right and so he had Peter Mayhew so that's you know got all the sci-fi nerves and then Kane Hodder is classic uh, horror guest you know uh, who, so who doesn't love horror yeah so he felt like uh, he had those two that would kind of just you know open the open the gate I guess as something that that could already come out being uh, all inclusive and from there he has He's definitely, definitely made effort to make sure that we have something um, from all, all the niches, all the genres. And I think he's really succeeded with that. So I think it's interesting to see the, you know, the span of generations here. Because you see, you know, moms and dads coming yeah. with their kids. And the moms and dads are totally into other guests. And the kids are into, you know, someone that their parents may not even have known about or even knew who they were. So it's interesting to see the different generations and who, who they grew up watching on TV it, and things like that. It is a little nuts. We, we actually just left the, the Battlestar Galactica panel. Yeah, you know, I and, heard um, that was crazy. It was... Yeah, it was it was crazy. It was like it was there's so much going on on stage, but uh, a lot of cool information, a lot of things that we didn't know. Um, but it was it was one of those things where you know I would look to my left and I would see you know very very much a senior citizen, and then I would look to my right and there's like a 13 year old kid you know breaking yeah. out like a high school acting yeah. you know like rocking out to what these right. guys had to say, right. and 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 you would think you hit the nail on the head when you said it's uh, this con and, and cons like it bridge the gap. You know, they allow these sure. these massive people and these audiences that normally never have a chance to interact with one another. It gives right. them a, a a safe zone, you know, right. a safe haven, a place to go. And it's right. you know, and and you've done very well with it. Like you not only 
I was talking to a colleague of yours on the way back here. Um, I forget the young gentleman's name. He brought us back. Okay. Um, but, I mean, he said you had like 11,000 people yesterday. Yeah. And that was your plan for the entire weekend. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's been monumental, the type of, you know, traffic flow that you guys have had. So, I mean, kudos yeah. to you guys. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, is there any type of particular panels here that you wish you guys could have gotten? Something that maybe you, you think could have spiced it up a little bit more? Um, I actually, I hadn't even seen our list of panels or panel schedule until <laughs> like the week before. Until like this morning. But, <laughs> but I, I thought they were awesome. I mean... We had, I know we had a couple Star Wars panels, and I, oh, I did get to sit in on one panel. It was a Freaks and Geeks panel with Sam Levine oh and my Sarah God. Hagen. That was an awesome show. Yes, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I, I mean, there's like such a, that show is just, it's just so Everybody got interesting. Their star yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's like where they all got their stuff. Like, where was so, I when this was being filmed? <laughs> Why did I get this? <laughs> Can we go How back in time, film? you know, and send my agent the resume? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so, so yes, yeah, so that that was funny. That was a really awesome panel. Um, Sam Levine was awesome, and Sarah Higgins is adorable. So, that was fun. I got to sit on that panel. But yeah, I, I mean, I've heard that all the panels have been really, I, I, really popular. I was blown away. Um, and and we actually divided and conquered as kids. We did. We wanted to cover more. Um, um, I got to sit in on Inverse Press, um, okay. I, and I, I pray that I get that right because they were super awesome. It's a local comic, you know, independent oh, yeah, publishers, yeah. and they were incredible. You know, they talked a lot about how to get going and the information nice. that these people from from you know the, the comics to mm -hmm. the Walking Dead. You know, I was a Walker panel. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're giving out very useful information yeah. for people who want to break into these industries yeah. and stuff like that. Which is which has been for me as a, someone who wants to aspire to be a. a you know, an actor who mm -hmm. someone knows about, you know, right. it's cool to get these little tidbits and how to do things the right way and For market sure. yourself. And, and there wouldn't be that without Pentagon. So that was really, right. really cool. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, what, who do you think next year would be a big, who would you love to see here maybe next time? Well, um, we are talking about... Well, I guess I don't know if I can name drop yet who we're talking about. If you do, I would love to be the first to have it. <laughs> this is a Geek IO original. We're breaking news from Pensacon. Continue. We can cut so, it out. We might okay, not per okay, personal. We'll, we'll go this way. For me personally, I would love to see more Game of Thrones guests just because. <laughs> Yes. And it's funny you heard because it. I have been, I you know, it, that was one of the shows that, I mean, it's, it's huge, and I just hadn't had a chance to watch it yet. So how many pictures do you have of Sodor? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten enough pictures yet. That's one thing that I'm kind of regretting today, because I keep seeing um, Will, the guy that took you back here. He's, yes. He got a ton of funny pictures with uh, a lot of our guests. Yeah. And, and we've been hanging out with them. I mean, because we take them downtown and yeah. make sure they have a good time and everything. But a little I jealous. haven't gotten enough pictures, but... We will hook yeah. you up. We've got tons of. We'll we'll make sure you cool. get plenty of pictures. Good. Just call us, and we're there for you. Good. Um, so yeah, I would love to see more Game of Thrones guests, just because I love that show. So, I, anyways, I started watching it as soon as we got our Game of Thrones guests. I was like, okay, I should probably watch it now, just so I know who these it's guys what are. We, did. we need to get up on this. And I watched it like all three seasons in one weekend. But um, but yeah, I, so I, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan now, and. They've been awesome. They're they're a lot of fun. They're, Did they're you come awesome. off of the binge watching of uh, Game of Thrones just utterly depressed? Because I know where you ended. Yes. I do know the where red you ended. Wedding. <laughs> yeah. wedding. Did you just come Did in you? and go, Odor, <laughs> console me. Odor, I need a hug. <laughs> just give a me a hug. That. Tell me it'll be okay. <laughs> Tell me winter's coming, please. <laughs> Um, Some consolation so, that. Uh, Game of Thrones, you'd love to see more of those. Now you said you, you don't want to name drop or you can't name drop. Because yeah, if I, there is a difference. I, I don't think I can. Fan, I don't want to give I anything away. That. We do have um, a couple of really, really awesome guests that um, I know that they're... One of them we tried to get this year, and he just wasn't... The dates weren't mm -hmm. weren't um, weren't working for him, but he totally would have come. <laughs> so Game of Thrones, um, any other uh, big, big names like that? Because I'll be honest, Game of Thrones is freaking amazing. Yeah, and it's it's that was actually Ben that got the hook up there because really? he... he Mr. One Man Show. I know, right? <laughs> So yeah, he's a producer. So he has some, you know, some connections in the entertainment industry. So he was producing Geth and Anthony. Um, he plays Rinley Baratheon on the show, yeah. and um, so he, so he was originally supposed to be here, but then he had um, really? he got assigned a, yeah. a job in England. So then that's when we got Hodor. We yeah. got Hodor to replace him. So yeah, I'd love to see more Game of Thrones. Um, I love, we didn't get to have David Prowse this year, uh, but we got Billy D. Uh, David Prowse had a surgery, uh, a conflict with scheduling his surgery, so 
Well, um, things, things happen. Yeah. yeah, but hopefully he'll be here next year. And we loved having Billy D was awesome. That was an awesome last. He he is a good. smooth criminal. I mean, oh, he, yeah. he really yeah. really is, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still such a you know an attractive guy. Yeah, he, he he's hasn't a good lost it. Dude. No, he's he he still got that bit. charm. I mean, like I look at him, and obviously he's done everything else. But he's like, I look at him, I'm like you are a smooth man, Mr. Calder. <laughs> Do you want my money? He just he just kind of glides around. Like, yeah. I mean, he's just... He <laughs> his just, pimp suit with his uh, Chuck Taylors on. I'm like, I applaud you, sir. <laughs> you. He's awesome. Um, let me ask you this now. We've talked um, kind of about what you'd like to see next year and bring in some of the you know, other talent like that. But um, how important is the media coverage for you guys? Now... I, we can sit here all day, and, and, and I obviously know that more exposure is the best exposure. Marketing is the best. I mean, right. that stuff's awesome, right? But you guys, I mean, I'm sorry, media people out there, but you didn't really need us. I mean, I look at the, the traffic flow that you've had, and there's just tons and tons of people here. Yeah. And, I mean, that's just, you guys did that. Yeah, I mean, so like I said, uh, Mike's been working on, he pretty much was just doing it all via Facebook, social media in the beginning. Wow. And, that's uh, impressive. I know, it really is impressive. And he said, I think it was pretty much like over, as soon as he put it out on Facebook and started promoting, he got a thousand likes on that page instantly, pretty much. Wow. And so then that's when we, you know, we knew like this is really going to be something that Pensacola is going to love. So since then, we've been pushing it. And so when I came on full time, that's when I was able to kind of get the ball rolling as far as a marketing plan. Because, you know, until then, it was pretty much, like I said, just all social media. Right. Which is excellent. I mean, it's been our biggest uh, asset for us really and it because it helps us connect with with uh, the fans and help uh, helps us kind of gauge the um, you know what they're thinking what they're into uh, what who they'd like to see and um, and, and of course it's, it's always the best way of getting you know information out there oh well. yeah I mean so, I think we were we were blogging about it as soon as we found out yeah, yeah. So. so you were talking a little bit about social media before you know and, and I remember you said that when, when you came on you guys had to like you know, just, I don't know, tell me kind of how that, when you came aboard, how everything right. happened for you. Yeah, so, like I said, Mike had been pretty much, um, had taken over the Facebook page mm -hmm. and Twitter, and, you know, that was his biggest tool at the time, so, and it really was, it, it's still, today, it's, you know, working the best for us out of everything. So, you know, we came up with the marketing plan, and we did, um, we did a lot of billboards, which was actually, we saw a huge return on investment really? with the billboards. Yeah. Wow. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, it's something, yeah, you don't ever really see conventions uh, advertising with billboards mm -hmm. outdoor at all. But, you know, I think, especially for getting the word around Pensacola, it was, it really it was cool to see something so big and vibrant and putting like recognizable names on the boards, you know, really uh, caught people's attention. And they were like, you know, people, it was, um. We had one on I-10 um, going one direction and one going the other direction. So we were catching people coming in and out of Pensacola. So those were the first two that we put up. Um, yeah, and that those makes were, more, yeah, yeah, a ton of sense. Yeah, so those have been up for for like a year now, I guess. And um, yeah, so well. we did some at Dragon Con as well. We did a few boards around Dragon Con. Uh, so that's that's been a huge success. And yeah, a lot of it has also been um, just going around to the conventions in this area and promoting uh, we've been to Dragon Con. Uh, we've been as far as Comic Con in San Diego. You guys, it so, sounds like you were very, you know, when people start off and do things like this, they're always like, let's just do this. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but with y'all, what I'm what I'm getting from what you're saying is, it's very strategic. It was, yeah. you know, because um, we do marketing or whatever for ours. Yeah. But I mean, yours sounds like you had a very much like a like this is how we're going to go after this. Right. And, I mean, obviously it's paid off. But yeah, yeah. I, it sounds like it was a phenomenal plan. Yeah, and, and you know, Mike had, he has marketing experience, um, you know, that's my background, and then Will Phillips, I think he was the one that took you guys back here. And Dash and so, Joe, yeah. <laughs> So he, he has, uh, you know, a background in that as well. So, you know, we were able to really, we really wanted to come at it strategically, you know, and mm -hmm. um, we wanted to push it as hard as we can and to be able to use all the assets that were available to us. And, you know, we had, you know, a, a nice budget as well to work with, which was, um, which was a lot of fun. That <laughs> so that always helps. <laughs> that always helps. So, yeah, so, you know, we wanted to make sure that we, uh, what, that we were in, you know, putting ourselves out there in the areas where we knew our target, target audience would be. And, you know, of course, just the basics, you know. Right. But, but, yeah, we definitely wanted to push it as hard as we can and get as much coverage as we can. So, And we were also really, really lucky to have a lot of the local media on board from the very beginning. So we had P&J, Pensacola News Journal, mm -hmm. um, 
We had Cat Country and a uh, local radio station, and I don't, I don't put country music together with I know, events, but right, hell no, yeah, I right? know. And, but they, it's been really popular. That's what I thought at first too. I was like, oh, country. We've gone no. country. Whoa! But right. Cat Country is a, it's a one of the. It, it largest seems, uh, radio stations around here so it's they've been really I, I, I get the feel that it was like Pensacola you know and, and you you're obviously going to attest to this where they literally just sat back and go we need to make this happen yeah. everybody support yeah. each other and that's kind of what I'm getting from it I mean it's Cat good. Country I mean we took a little joke but you know every I mean the, it's it's cool to see other companies supporting you Definitely, guys and, yeah. and where you're at yeah so I, I, there was a little bit of uh, a learning curve I guess at the beginning or I don't know if that's the the right way to put it but at the beginning uh, probably the most difficult challenge was explaining to people and educating them on what a convention is you know because this area isn't as yeah, familiar with really that kind of scene you know <laughs> so yeah we definitely what? you know people and but the more people learned about it the more they they understood the more excited they got about it so yeah. so yeah definitely i mean we we worked really hard to make sure that everyone downtown especially was on board and they all have totally, they're, you know, all hands in. Oh, yeah. I, I think we, I was using the app and I was like, specials, cool. Let's see what type of t-shirts they have on. Beer special here, food here. I'm like, wow. Like, these are tons yeah. of local companies yeah. that are just like, come, come hang out. Yes, Let's all exactly. support each other. And that, and that helps, you know what I mean? Because exactly. it, it's like, if once you're here, you're like, okay, I want to get out, get a break. You can go down to Hop Jacks. Right. You can go down to the other places, supporters right. that you guys have. So that's really neat. Um we obviously talked about the volume of where, of what we're experiencing right now. It's right. massive, right? What was y'all's expectations? Because I'm gonna say, I will literally say there's no way you guys could have expected this. That was ten thousand was our highest expectation. And that, that was, was a day or for the weekend? That was for the weekend. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, you know, we would that was pretty much the highest number that was going around the office as far as expectations. So when we when we saw that when because the base center has been uh, keeping the one that's been good, keeping track good, good, of the numbers good. coming in and coming into the building, so when they gave us the numbers at the end of the day, it was uh, two thousand five hundred, and we were just ecstatic. Yeah, so. I mean that's like did, did you guys? Yeah, it all it reminds me of um you know when when we just landed the rover on Mars, you know, and then you <laughs> see so like they're all like yeah. we did it, yeah, you know, did y'all have that moment? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. That is our, awesome. our our boss came around, Ben came around, and was just giving everyone huge hugs. That is like, freaking cool, yeah. man. It was it was awesome. Yeah, yeah and it it's gotta awesome. be like a sigh for like we did it. You know, yeah. all the hard work has yes, paid off. So, yes, it, yeah. was, it was such a just yeah. It was it just feels so great to to see all of Pensacola come and support yeah. it. You know, and um, and we had the mayor. We had the mayor. Come. Which is nuts. Yeah, I was escorting <laughs> the mayor around, giving him a. You don't ever get to say that. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, is this real life? Is this? Yeah. I mean, is this is Ashton? Am I punk? <laughs> Is this punk? Did you, Bill? Did you punk? Is yeah, Billy D. Are you punking me? You smooth guy, you. So uh, I know you're busy, so I got, I got two more questions okay. for you. Um, you know, and, and this is one I just want you to like, you know, completely open up, lay your heart on the table. Okay. You have your one choice of a guest, just one, and, and they're and they're gonna say yes because it's okay. you ask them. Who's it gonna be? Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Just, there it is. Oh, thank just, you so we're much. We're gonna make that happen. We're yes, happen. I, I think that's a that's an incredible choice for for that. I uh, I may have gone the Doctor Who side of it, but that is a phenomenal phenomenal yeah. choice. And congratulations on booking it, by the way. Oh, you heard yeah. it first. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, 2015. Yeah, good choice. Very good choice. Um, okay, and then the last question. This is a a how it stacks viewer quite, listener. We don't have. All right. So. Uh, Someone buys you a hedgehog. Okay. Hedgehog. What do you name it? So it's funny you asked me this question because I'm I happen now. I happen to follow a hedgehog on Instagram. <laughs> His name is Biddy the Hedgehog. Biddy the Hedgehog. And I'm not kidding. I will look I, up Biddy the Hedgehog. So I kind of I went through this. Um, my mom has this thing where she sends me like cute animal pictures during yeah. the day and it's like it's just this joke that we have um like to calm each other down when we're having stressful days like if she knows we're having a stressful day or whatever like every day leading she's up like, just to like lighten it down. up or whatever so <clears throat> one day she sent me this picture of the hedgehog and i was obsessed as soon as i saw it and so i started following him on instagram and so i was like i literally googled where can I buy a hedgehog in Pensacola? <laughs> Must have hedgehog. And then I guess my next question is, do you like Sonic at all? Or you... <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, um, 
<laughs> I didn't really grow up uh, playing that, but it's yeah. Cool. Anyways, it, it, anyways, so yeah. yeah, back to the hedgehog. No. Back to the hedgehog. So uh, yeah, Will Will looked over at me and he was like, "What? Why are you googling hedgehogs right now?" <laughs> I was like, oh, no, "You don't I know, not Will." Be interested in buying a hedgehog? But. What if you got a hedgehog named Benedict Cumberbatch? That would be a mouthful. I could call him Benny. Benny for short. Yes, and then, and he then can him play and for... Biddy. Yes, be friends. Benny and Biddy. Done. <laughs> Boom. How it stacks original. Benny and Biddy. It'll be the next podcast so next we year. do. Yeah, next, next year. year. Benny will be here. Um, Benny Amanda, Benny. You, you have been exceptional. I, I can't thank, thank you, you enough. On behalf of all of the media, I could care less what they say, do, and or think. <laughs> I will thank you um, for them. You have been absolutely incredible. Thank um, you so much. The staff has been inviting. Uh, the I'm the so venue has been has been great. Um, everybody has been very cordial. Uh, so okay. I, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, I really hope that we get a chance to work together next year. But yes. um, once again, um, Amanda, thank you for coming on and, and well, interviewing with us. I really you guys appreciate are awesome. it. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks. And this is JD from Alan Stacks with Amanda. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> <laughs>